What on earth is AVR? How did it become one of the greatest successes in the industry? And what does AVR really stand for? It's a long story, and it started right here. The Norwegian University of Technology and Science educates several thousand master and PhD candidates every year and is a prime resource for technological brain power for the industry in Norway. In 1992, two students graduated with a thesis on a RISC microcontroller with flash program memory. Alf Egil Bogen and Vegar Vollan were confident that their innovative design had competitive advantages and decided to develop it further. After a couple of years of refining the architecture and adding peripherals, a complete design took form. It became evident that their invention was ready for the next step. They needed a corporate partner. The two Norwegians stayed downtown San Francisco, eating waffles with brown cheese at the Sailors' Church while waiting for the meeting with Atmel in Silicon Valley. I remember the first time we went to San Jose. We uh, had scheduled a meeting with the top management of Atmel, and the first thing they said to us in the meeting was that they had about 10 minutes to listen to us. And we had prepared about 42 pages, starting with very much details and bits and bytes, and uh, we looked at each other and said, we are not going to make this presentation in 10 minutes. So we decided to reverse the order and uh, starting with the last page showing $100 million revenue. And that got their attention. We moved all the way back to page number one with bits and bytes and the whole meeting took about three hours. They rented an entire floor in a Trondheim office building and started recruiting the best minds in the region. Most of them straight out of university. We were a small group of people working very closely together those days. We built an invaluable asset to the Atmel Norway team. A unique team spirit, which is still one of the most important qualities of our much larger team today. 1997 is a milestone in this story. A year where the AVR started attracting international attention. It was the year when the first actual AVR product hit the market, the 1890S-1200. We launched a very easy to use microcontroller. It had built-in flash, which was in-system programmable. We had E-squared on board. And on top of this, we had free development tools. Offering a low-cost hardware emulator and giving away software tools for free was a very controversial thing to do at the time but it helped make the AVR very attractive to the market. This immediately made it possible for everyone to enter the world of AVR. A strategy that soon proved to be successful and made the company grow rapidly. Today, the AVR is a market-leading, high-performance, ultra-low-power microcontroller. From day one, we wanted to enable our AVR users with the perfect balance between high performance and the lowest possible power consumption. And the AVR architecture is supporting this in two major ways. First, it's the single cycle instruction execution and it's the highest code density. These two in combination are giving the AVR CPU architecture, which is really supporting our low power consumption. We added development and design techniques to this and developed a ultra-low power design technique. And in addition, we fine-tuned our process manufacturing technologies. So it's the cocktail of these three elements, which are together resulting in the industry's lowest power micros today. The AVR teams have extended the product families into the 32-bit range, with the AVR32 product family launched in 2006. Furthermore, product groups have also been established in other countries, such as France, Germany and Finland. As a consequence of all the expansion, the number of patents is constantly growing. We have a number of patents on the AVR core, the peripherals, even on the complete systems. And as our number of devices grows, so does our number of pending and granted patents. We are constantly working to develop new and innovative products. 
to grow our market shares in the market where we are today, but also to expand into new segments for the future. To achieve this, we need good people with passion about their work. It's a big teamwork between designers, it's marketing people, it's manufacturing, it's sales and distribution. All of it is equally important. Here in Trondheim, we have one of the best universities in Europe. And uh, most of the 170 employees we have here in Trondheim today are educated at this university. The technological excellence of the AVR products is widely appreciated, turning many customers into fans more than just users. An AVR community has formed on the internet, inspired to collaborate and share their knowledge, adding to the solid technical support directly from Atmel. What does AVR really stand for? Well, I guess we promised to talk about that, didn't we? So, um, <laughs> AVR stands for... So, so much of a mystery. Oh well, you know what AVR really stands for anyway. <laughs>